Hi, my name is Justin McElroy. I'm, my posture's bad, and I'm from Huntington, West Virginia. Uh, that's me, in a nutshell. Bad posture from West Virginia. We did, like, a lot of community theater growing up. I mean, like, constantly, show to show to show. And I was Winnie the Pooh in first grade in a production of Winnie the Pooh, and that really rocketed me to local stardom. I think the thing that I, I dug about creating the arts in West Virginia. It was people doing it because they loved it. There was no sort of illusion about converting it into stardom, right? That was a really helpful place to start from. My dad was a DJ and uh, at the radio station, so we would do ads like when he needed a cute kid voice, like, Buchanan Auto Mall is the place to go for great deals and low APR. A combination of community theater and local radio, you cross those together and you get podcasting. I also decided to major in acting and directing in college. I clearly remember like thinking like, well, I'm not gonna actually do this for a living. When I realized that I was going to be a failure in theater, I got into journalism. I was a full-time reporter for a while. During that, I was writing about video games in my free time, like anybody that would have me, just kind of like banging on every door. It's something that I had always wanted to do, but had no real hope of doing because I lived in West Virginia, right? But as the internet became more widely available, like it became possible for somebody like me to work in a media like that. I got a part-time job at a video game blog called Joystick that used to be run by AOL. And they had a podcast and that was really where I sort of learned the basics of, of podcasting. I was learning by putting out an episode, seeing people get mad about stuff that wasn't good, and then trying to fix that stuff in the next episode. In 2010, both my brothers, Travis and Griffin, moved away from Huntington for the first time. It was the first time we hadn't all lived in the same area and we weren't talking much. And we realized like we could do something that would force us to talk. We hit upon an advice show where we would basically take questions from people and answer them to the worst of our abilities. We are coming up now on our, our 10th anniversary and our 500th episode of, of, that, of that show, My Brother, My Brother and Me. When you record podcasts like we do a lot of it is so in a vacuum that it can be hard to tell the impact you're having and then when we start touring more regularly and you get out and you like see people uh and meet people who are affected by what you do and care about what you do we turned it into a, a tv show we filmed my brother my brother and me in huntington that was something we felt really strongly about because we know where all the bathrooms are here uh, and all the good hot dog places. There aren't a lot of great representations in mainstream media of this area. Having something out there that portrayed West Virginia the way we saw it, which is a place full of like warm, kind, intelligent people, that was really important to us. Every year we do a holiday show called Candle Night. So we get people from all over coming to Huntington and like the entire day, it's such a delight because I'm seeing these tweets of people like seeing the town the way we see it. So after we did my bim bam, my wife and I, she's a physician, we do a medical history podcast uh, called Sawbones. We started a podcast called The Adventure Zone, uh, which was us playing Dungeons and Dragons with our dad. That has done really well. Uh, we've turned that into a graphic novel series. I feel like kind of a phony sometimes because I'm, you know, a, a New York Times bestselling author, but really all I did was like change my dialogue to make it funnier than everybody else's. We're working on a, a pilot for an animated series right now. This is our second time with an NBC <laughs> streaming service. So here's hope in this one. This is the one we knock it out of the park uh, and everybody should get Peacock if it's available by the time you're seeing this, unless our show isn't there, in which case cancel it immediately. No, I'm sure there's other, the office is probably on there or something. So we were in Portland and we got high on legal edibles and decided it would be a good career move to get into the movie Trolls 2. We called our agent and said, hey, get us in Trolls 2. He said no. Eventually he managed to get us bit speaking part in the film. If you listen to the trailer, I swear to God, the role of techno beat drop button, it sounds like the three of us stitched together which would be like a wild cop out for them to just like take one word from each of us and be like, there, you're in the movie. But like, danged if I didn't show people the trailer, like that's one third me probably. People care about something that we make so much and like put so much thought and energy into like fan art and, and things it's like that. Cre is was created in a laboratory. Absolutely. In mm -hmm. a lab. Okay, I buy it. I, I never want to take it for granted, having that level of support from people. I feel like now the stuff that I make 
Um, if people like it and I've made something that people enjoy and it gives them a little bit of hope and levity and, and whatever, then I've like, I've been a success in, in my book. And I think that started with West Virginia because the people here were not doing it for the money and it wasn't for the fame. It was literally just to like look into the blackness and like make something where there before was nothing. And that impulse to like work at it and keep a million things going at once and to try things and get rejected and not get too bent out of shape about it. Like that's a superpower that I think I have from living in West Virginia and trying to get literally anyone to respond to my emails. I have not moved out of West Virginia. You know, I could move to other places, uh, certainly. It might be advantageous for my career. The things that that could bring you money and, and success and fame and stuff, I don't find nearly as satisfying as like being at home, being able to build creative communities in areas that aren't New York and LA. I would say that like, if you want a professional career in the arts and you're from an area like this, especially if you plan on staying in an area like this, there are hurdles that you're going to have to work harder than other people. Um, I will say, though, that working harder than other people is something that I had to do to get to where I am. And that's an impulse that, like, still serves me really well. And a lot more people could relate to you, an artist from a city that probably looks a lot more like theirs. Like, you, you have a unique perspective and unique stories. That's that's a unique ability. And, it, and it's something that you can, you can capitalize on if you're willing to work hard enough to, to make it happen.